Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to your C++ tutorial series. This video, we are going to go through some examples of inheritance. So we're going to create a base class and then a derive class or a subclass. So to start off, we have this user class over here and it looks a little something like this. But the thing about a user is it's very general. We might want some more specifics too. Let's say we're creating an application for teachers and students. You might have a class for teachers and you might have a separate class for students. A lot of stuff is going to be the same between these two classes, so you might derive from user and put the common stuff such as first name and last name. And then anything that's differentiating, such as classes being taught, well that's going to be specific to a teacher. And then maybe hours of studying, that's going to be specific to a student. So teachers teach, students study. They're different, but they both have things in common, so they should both inherit from user. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video, but first check out our sponsor, Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create separate files for teachers. So we're going to go with the multiple file compilation route. So what we need to do is we need to create a new file, call it teacher.h, and then a new file, teacher.cpp for the implementation. And I'm going to get rid of the user stuff. We're not gonna need that for right now. So just to clear it up, we're just gonna have teacher h teacher cpp in main.cpp now inside of teacher.h we're going to create the class so what we're going to do is we're just going to say class teacher and this is going to inherit from user and you prefix it with public to say you want to inherit all of the members just as they are now after the class you're going to put a semicolon oh i got you i always forget that but i got it this time now inside of here, we're going to have some public members. Specifically, let's create a vector of classes being taught. So the vector will probably just be of type string. And we'll just call it classes teaching, like so. And we'll also create a method. So let's create a method. It's going to be real simple. You could go into operator overloading and all that stuff. But let's just keep it real simple for us. We'll call it output. So this will just output some information about the teacher. Now, here's one area of confusion I have. I've done research on it, but I haven't really figured out a solid answer. So maybe if you guys have a layer of expertise in this, you could help me out. Sometimes it's not really clear where you need to include particular header files. So for example, I can go up here and include header files, but I could also do stuff inside of CPP. Should I do it in the header file, the CPP file, or both? So that's pretty confusing for me. Let me know what you guys think if you have any struggles with that, or if you know a good way to know where files need to be included. But for me, I basically just go with the fact that if it's compiling, it should be pretty good to go. <laughs> it's probably a terrible way to do it, but what we're going to do is we're going to include vector here, and when we compile, we wanna make sure we compile with C++ 11. We'll also include string, just because we're using strings as well. All right, so that is the header file, but as you know with header files, you want to put the preprocessor directives to basically prevent us from including this content more than once. So that's going to look like this. If not defined, if in def, give it a name, we'll say teacher underscore h. Then what we're going to do is we're going to define teacher underscore h. And then at the end, all we have to do is say and if. So that's just a, another layer of protection for us. Now we're going to include teacher.h inside of teacher.cpp and main.cpp. So inside of here, we're going to say include teacher.h as well as inside of main, we'll say include teacher.h. Now one other thing inside of the header, because we're inheriting from user, we're going to want to include user.h like so. So this is the header file. Now we actually want to do the implementation. So inside of teacher.cpp, we can reference that method by prefixing it with teacher. So we can say teacher and then say output. And this is going to be a void return type. You gotta make sure you remember to do that as well. All we're going to output is, we'll just put output for now, nothing crazy. We can always go back and add more, 
but let's just keep it simple for right now. Now inside of main, let's go through an example of using a teacher. At the end of main, we'll just say teacher, give it a name of teacher lowercase, and then we'll just say teacher.output. All right, now let's compile. To do that, we're gonna say g++ main.cpp. We'll also need user.cpp because we're using that inside of this main. And then we'll also need teacher.cpp. And of course, don't you dare forget C11. All right, we got one error, let's take a look. That's in teacher.cpp. I think we just need to include IO stream. So up here, we'll just say include IO stream. And now we'll compile. So to touch again on the include files, let me show you guys an example. You can take this include file and you can cut it and put it inside of teacher.h, which works because it's going to be included right here. So when we compile here, it should still work. And indeed it does. So my question to you guys is, should we include IO stream inside of the header file or should we include it inside of the implementation file? That is the question. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Either way, I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. I'll leave them in the header file for right now. All right, now let's run the application and see if it works. So we run it, and this is going to ask us for a user, so let me just put some stuff in here. So that is for the user, and then it goes and outputs output from the teacher. And you can see it says output right there. So it seems that teacher is working fine, but the cool thing here is that teacher should still have a name and everything like that. So we could say teacher dot first name and assign it the value of teach and we should be able to output that and when we compile and run you can see it outputs teach so we inherited first name as well as some of the other data members from the user class now there is one more thing I wanted to show you guys before you go and that is the chain of calling when it comes to constructors so let me just explain what I mean here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go into the teacher.h file and we're going to create the default constructor. So that's just going to look like teacher. It's going to have the same exact name as the class itself. And then inside of the implementation file, all we gotta do is say teacher colon colon teacher, and that'll be the method. And we can give it a body. Let's just do an output and just say teacher created, like so. And then I wanna do the same thing inside of the user, which if you remember, teacher inherits from user. So let's go into our files and open user.cpp and there should be a constructor right here. All we're going to do is we're going to say standard.c out user created. All right, that's all we should need for those. Let's go back to main.cpp and let's just clean some of this code up. Let's get rid of this and let's just, all we want to do is create a teacher. And now let's compile and run. When we run this, you can see it says user created and then teacher created. So it calls the constructor of the user and then it calls the constructor of the teacher. So basically what's going on, when you create a teacher, it first creates a user and then it creates a teacher. So teacher is in fact also a user and that's going to come up inside the next video where we're gonna talk about polymorphism. But basically what you need to know is that there is a base object created and then a subclass object created as well and that teacher is also considered a user. All right, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully it wasn't too crazy. And I'll see you in the next video where we're gonna talk about polymorphism and get some hands-on practice with that. So check it out, it should be pretty fun. I'll see you then.